welcome to the mission of St. Anne. Tonight we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Please rise and join us for the end of celebration with On This Day, O oh Beautiful Mother.
God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, that what we relive in remembrance, we may also hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and you through the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have. He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to me. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. interesting talking with people uh, just about how their life changed because of this last year with COVID, where some people have had lots of time on their hands, and so their house is spotless, right? I mean, they've had time to clean their house and clean the house and, and do all the things that they've always wanted to do. They've had the time to do that. And then there's other people on the other side, like me, where life has just been so busy. I mean, it has been like non-stop that my, my house has gone the opposite direction. <laughs> and so generally, when it gets bad, I know I clean at least once a year when the bishop comes. <laughs> so this week I was cleaning, and it's like, why did I wait so long? So I went into that mode of cleaning that, not, that would not make my mother proud at all. And it's where I start looking to see which closets I can use to just put everything, right? <laughs> now I'm going to have to go find where I put everything. We do that 
it sometimes also in different ways. We can do it personally. We can do it as a family. We can do it as a church where we put things in the closet that we don't want to see, right? We, have, we, have, we all have a tendency to do that. It's, there's, there's sometimes there's things we feel shame about. It's much easier to hide things than it is to deal with them. But I really believe the nature of true love is in an appropriate way. We're able to deal with things as equals, as adults, as brothers and sisters. And that means also that we're a healthy family when we can do that. Sometimes when the shame is too much, we become an unhealthy family and we leave the skeletons in the closet. God always desires, though, to heal. And I really believe that. And that's why I think it's important when there is something that causes us grief, something that's really not pleasant at all, is for us to be able to talk about it on some level. Because Jesus always wants to bring his love and always wants to bring healing. So there is something, you can probably imagine I'm leading up to something. It has nothing to do with me personally, nor this community. But it does have to do with our local Catholic community. I honestly don't remember last week if I announced it here or I mentioned it here. One of the previous pastors from St. Cecilia's in Stanwood, Father James Zakowitz, was a young man. I was in the seminary with him. He was two years behind me, I believe. He's a Carmelite friar. Uh, he passed away a week ago. And that was, it, it, it hurt because it was such a shock. Um, but this week we had a Zoom meeting with the Archbishop and they did something that they don't always often do. They were very honest with us about some of the things that were going on in Father James's life. He was struggling with depression. He was struggling with uh, really severe anxiety. And he took his own life. Oh. There are probably a lot of people who would prefer I would not say that publicly. But I believe there's something important about us being a family where we carry, we carry these things together. We don't bury them. This has been very difficult. I mean, I knew him. I knew him. I wasn't, I'm not going to say I was his best friend or anything like that, but I knew him. And I've just been in, in shock and disbelief. When they said that on the Zoom meeting, I didn't hear anything after that. I mean, the meeting went on for 45 minutes, and I didn't hear anything. It's just, it's been, it's been devastating to think that, to even comprehend that, a, that anyone would do that, but especially one of our pastors, one of our priests. How would that happen? How would somebody, how would one of our priests get to that point? I don't have a good answer for you. In this Zoom meeting, they start talking about mental health and all the resources that we have. And um, men aren't very good at being able to grieve together, so we just intellectualize everything. So we kind of did that in the meeting. And I have no doubt that there were. There were mental health needs that he had that were not being met. But for us as a community, to simply say, this is, this is one example where we simply want to bear the burden. This is, this is the nature of what the cross looks like. This is what Jesus did. He didn't, he didn't want to sweep all of our sins under the carpet. He didn't want to put them in the closet. He wanted to bear them publicly. It was, a, it was a deep expression of his love. This is the nature of, of Jesus crucified on the cross, right? He will not separate himself from us, no matter what we go through and no matter what happens. <clears throat> One of the things that I always share whenever I have a funeral or a situation where 
it is publicly known that a person took their life. I always want to make sure that there's no confusion on two things. One, God is merciful, and only God knows what's in the heart of that person. And therefore, we refrain from trying to, or even feeling the need to render some type of judgment on their salvation. The church has grown a lot in that. Culpability for something like this often is diminished because of mental issues and things like that. But the second thing, which I think is equally important, is that to take one's life is always evil. I'm not saying that in judgment of anybody. It's simply an evil act. It is a form of murder. And I think it's, it's even it's more devastating because of what it does to family and friends, and in this case, parishioners and the many people that he did minister to and did well. It is devastating, and it is always wrong. And I think that's just a good reason for us to keep him in our prayers as long as we can. To pray for his family, to pray for his mom, for the people who are going to bear the grief of this for the duration of their life here on earth. And that's why I always say it is always a wrong decision. And so if there ever was someone that you know or someone that was really struggling, please take it seriously. Sometimes it's easy for us to just ignore warning signs or to, to not even see them because we're not looking for them. But for us to take our relationships serious, I ask the question, what would cause, what would cause Father James, but I want to generalize it a little bit and say, what would cause a priest to feel so isolated, so sad, if you will, to think about something like that. And I don't, I honestly don't know what he was struggling with or what may have caused it. But I'm going to tell you something that I see in the priest today that can cause sometimes deeper levels of depression or struggles. And it's when, perhaps in their own mistakes, or perhaps not even in their mistakes, they feel like the people who they try to love and minister to reject what they're offering. And so it's to live in a world that rejects God's love, that rejects God, it's, it's deeply frustrating and it can be very difficult. And if we ourselves are not really healthy spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and all those things, it is one of the most, I think it's one of the most challenging things in any job, it's not a job, but in any vocation today. And so I think in parishes, I have to say, I tell people this all the time, I feel like I'm on vacation here at St. Anne's and St. Mary's because you all are so wonderful, but I've had assignments where it was, it was almost to the more than what a person should be asked to handle. For us to keep that in mind, and I'm going to generalize it even a little bit more, we should always be very careful about what we expect of people. If we put burdens that are too much for them, then to recognize that person may crack under it, that person may crumble under those burdens. And so for us to really take these words of Jesus to heart, his desire to share his love. I love the word, one of the words that he uses today, he says, remain, remain in my love. Do not leave my love. I also see in that a beautiful example of what our mothers, what our moms, just naturally and supernaturally bring into our life. The desire that our mothers have for us. It's very simple what they desire. To give us life. To give us life in abundance. Again, a quote from Jesus. Our mothers seek and desire to give that. Now I know not, when I talk about moms, 
Sometimes it's hard to do that because I know not everyone has always had a perfect experience in that relationship. But perhaps it's to know that what it should be is no less beautiful. And then to desire that. Because it's amazing what God can do in bringing healing. One thing I did want to talk about, I want to turn this a little bit, hopefully, something more beautiful and positive. And it's an example that I see uh, just in the nature of how women work in the community, when they, when they come together to fight for something that needs to be fought for. I'm going to go back to an example. It's not necessarily an example that's faith-based per se. It had to do with many years ago, when I was younger, of a mother who lost a child to a drunk driver. She took it upon herself to make sure that no mother would ever have to feel that pain. So she started an organization, and so many people then participated in that, that it truly was transformative. It's things like that where you see motherhood just be so powerful. I would say we are in no less in need of that today. We often think of the church having power or authority. We, we look at the pope or the bishops or the priests. It's not where the real power comes from, though. They are simply fruits of their moms loving them, their dads as well, their families. But that's the fruit of it, where the real power of receiving Christ's love comes from. It comes from the... It comes from the moments of conception. It comes from the day in and day out, the love that parents offer their children, and then have that fruit bear out as they become adults, become leaders in the community. I want all moms really to understand that and to have consolation in that, that their love will always bear fruit in many different ways. When we see a world, however, where we're losing sight of the power of that love, is that the fight for it. When we see moms who've put other things more important over their children or their marriage or their families, help them. Help them go back to what's most important. Help them to see the power of their motherhood and what it can do in the community. I gave you one example today where somewhere something broke down and being that he was a priest, he is a priest, it means that the church is a mother, somewhere something fell apart, somewhere he did not receive what he needed to receive. And so then I think that should impel, again, all of us, and then as we look at ourselves as priests, is to fight for that. For, for Christ's love, if it's been lost, to regain it and to seek it and desire it. I didn't want to talk about this on Mother's Day weekend, but I really feel like a sign, again, of a healthy family is our ability to talk about things in a healthy way, to grieve together and to pray for each other. So one thing I would ask is pray for the prisoners of St. Cecilia's. Pray for everyone who, who's known Father James and his family and friends. The last thing I want to say, actually, is really beautiful, it's really positive, and it's, it's one of the beautiful ways that God's mysterious love works. I've mentioned a couple times, we have a young man in our community who's been discerning his vocation to the priesthood, and part of that process is to apply to the archdiocese. And he just recently was accepted. And he is our newest seminarian. And he is not here this evening. <laughs> I think he knew I was going to announce it. He is normally playing with, well, he shares with his brother the, the obligation of playing the piano. So David Doe, Anthony's brother, is the newest seminarian for our diocese. imagine there is no one more proud than his mom. So, 
I say this also, pray for him. This journey is a long one, and he will need our prayers, and he will need our support. He will not need our pressure, um, but he needs the space too. He needs to be able to accurately and, and discern this with integrity in his heart. Um, so we definitely need to keep him in our prayers. Together we profess our faith. I Father has not left us as orphans. He has sent us the Holy Spirit. Let us make our common prayer in the power of that Spirit to be true. For the church, that she may lead people to love Christ and to keep his commandments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who govern and exercise authority, that they may bring peace and justice to the nations of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that missionaries may banish darkness and despair from all hearts and minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new evangelization, that we may be able to share with others the reason for the hope we cherish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have gone before us in death, that they may be raised to the life of the risen Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We include in that last prayer all of those who we know who have passed away. We include Father James in that. Also all of our moms who are deceased. In gratitude for their love for us. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who continue to struggle with COVID, struggle with other illnesses, for all those who care for them, especially here in our own hospitals and care centers, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all love, may the sacrifice we are about to offer on this altar ascend with our prayers to you and bring upon us your blessing and your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your words may be acceptable to God and my Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace. prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, Christ, our Passover, hath been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with this Easter joy, every land and every people exult in your praise. Even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of their glory as they acclaim. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of mystery of faith. As we 
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Especially remember our moms and grandmas. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and to him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
you who are unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
to the ever-living God who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. As Father said, we want to make sure to say Happy Mother's Day. And so as you leave today, um, we do have a uh, flower for you, a rose. Um, so don't break yourself on the, on the way home. Be very careful. But that we have that gift for you. And, um, and don't forget your grub and go. Thank you. I'm going to say the, the muffins with the X on them, have nuts. That doesn't mean they don't have nuts. That means they have nuts. So they're just confused. X means yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Okay. <laughs> um, the, the, the flowers and little corsages are from the Knights of Columbus. And we, have, we have Grumpy back here that's oh, representing them. So just okay. thank you the Knights of Columbus for representing <laughs> Say something. Yeah, I, I want to say it right from here. You know, a lot of times I think about our church, but you know, every morning, and I just listen to my father talk about Luz and I, and a good friend of his. Every morning I'm praying for Father Peter. Every morning I pray for all prayer words in the church. And he didn't want me to pray words. So I always pray for Father Peter every morning, every night. And I think we need to hear, and I'm not saying we don't appreciate your Father, but I think we need to say when we talk about prayers, we need to talk about you because you're giving every day, day and night to us, and us as Christians. I've been going to church here for over 70 years, now, and I appreciate the relationship I have with you because you're one of the better ones that we had out here. And I think that uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Kopesh, one of our troubled members, to say a prayer for you and maybe some of the things that we can do better to make it better for yourself and just help you on the way as we go in this church. Thank you. 